Cutting edge science and research across Europe now in Futuris. A person's sweat can reveal a lot about their state of health. That's why researchers at the Biotex project in Dublin want to develop ways of analysing perspiration. Their latest prototype has inbuilt biochemical sensors that record data such as the saltiness, the acidity and the temperature of sweat. The results are sent wirelessly to a computer. What we do is we take a piece of fabric and in that fabric we define a fluidic channel which you can see here. Along that channel we place a pH sensor, conductivity sensor, sodium sensor and temperature sensor. The composition of sweat changes as it ages so it's important to get it as it's excreted by the body and this is quite difficult. So what we've done in this system is by defining this channel and placing this absorbent at the end of the channel we can be continuously pulling fresh sweat through the system and analysing it as the person exercises and it's not been possible to do this before. The sports industry would be among the first to gain from wearable technology like smart shoes or t-shirts equipped with sensors. Studying sweat is not meant to replace traditional methods like blood tests but rather to complement them. This is more person friendly. People don't like to give blood. A lot of people they get nervous or they, they feel faint. In the future we hope to develop this system into a t-shirt which will integrate other sensors besides what we see here. So we'll have a full physiological picture of a person as they train or exercise. The technology could soon be used as a weapon in the battle against sports doping or a tool for physios and trainers to keep an eye on how their athletes are performing. Either way, it's good news for sport. We're really at the first generation of sensors. I think it'll revolutionise how we prepare our sports team and how we manage our sports teams. We will be able to individually track players and players who are having decrements in performance, we, we will be able to, to assess that at a much earlier stage in the game and to be able to make appropriate changes and to put people in the appropriate positions on the, on the field because of our, of our ability to track real time. Outside of the sports world, the technology may also be used in medicine. For example, diabetics or cystic fibrosis sufferers could be monitored continuously from home. The possibilities will grow as researchers overcome new obstacles. Textiles are soft, electronics are hard, chemicals will change and they're not very stable. To integrate everything into something wearable to measure activities is extremely difficult. It is possible to reduce the size. Um, the best way is to make the fabric itself the sensor rather than to have a sensor added onto the fabric. In the next 10 years, we will see products in the market measuring biometrics. Sweat, um, saliva and uh, probably the tears. From Dublin to another wearable technology site in Bremen, Germany. Here, scientists are developing devices designed to aid multitasking, allowing users to carry out physical jobs whilst using a computer at the same time. The Wear It at Work project leader at Bremen University explains that the idea is to create various gadgets that fit specific job needs. It's called wearable computing. Uh, yeah. Wearable computing. You get an, an information on the move, but it is different to mobile computing in so far as it gives you an information in an ambient way. And it is detecting the context in, in which you are actually and uh, ad adopts uh, the application to your specific working environment. The study can also be used in the emergency services. Different sensors are built into firefighters' equipment, like their boots. With wireless communication, fire crews could get computer images of a site when there is little or no visibility. Or perhaps it could identify the presence of toxic fumes. Several crews across Europe have taken part in tests. We had to understand what the users really feel during their work, what their problems are when they do their work. We had to understand the work. And so we had to participate in training uh, workshops and in training sessions of the Paris Fire Brigade to really understand 
what firefighters uh, do and how they prepare for such interventions. Another use is medical surgery. Wearing an electronic bracelet and belt, a doctor can use his computer and transfer data from a distance. In testing, developers made adjustments according to various factors, including psychological ones, as the technology may make some patients feel uneasy. You can use this wristband uh, by gestures, but there is also one of the, the experiences we, we made with uh, acceptance of this technology. If you do that at the patient's bed and you move your arm vertically and horizontally, uh, then people think that it's probably not a good idea because it has a different meaning. Therefore, we came uh, with a new approach, which is now based on micro gestures, and these uh, gestures are much more accepted than the gestures we had at the very beginning of the project. This new interaction between man and computer needs to avoid overcomplicating daily tasks, but instead provide useful data and warn of eventual problems. Developers are constantly trying to innovate and fine-tune these tools of the future. On this PCB, there is a Bluetooth module, a small power supply unit, and interfaces which connect to a, to a sensor module and to an RFID reader. So this module collects the information from both the RFID reader and the sensor and sends them over Bluetooth back to a PC. Left click, right click, yes, no, up, down. So that the, the anti-design does not restrict movement at all. It would be able to track moving up, moving sidewards with this or that speed at a given time. If you want to get the information in an ambient way, you have to support a primary task which has nothing to do with the computer at all by information which comes from the computer system. And this has to not disturb you during your primary task. This is our so-called hotwire simulator. I use this glasses here, which carry a small display. I now see the same thing that you see on the mon monitor. So I'll try to do two tasks at once, moving this rod along, and in the same time, answering the questions that appear on my field of vision on the screen. Working at a computer without using a keyboard or a mouse opens up a world of possibilities. The technology exists in labs. Soon we may be using it at work and even at home. <laughs> so there you go.